to how to place a small concrete slab ball by yourself. That's Benny Blanco. That's our cat right there. Yo, this is some work I done, see? That's some stucco as a room addition right there. I did all the stucco for that right there. And uh, there's some concrete I poured, a sidewalk coming down. I did this rock work right there. Natural stone. More concrete, natural stone right there. This is a staircase I did. Double set of stairs, two stairs, and a one stair, and a landing. Stucco on one side. Natural stone on the other side, as you can see right there. Attached to that is a 30 foot radius wall. It's about four foot high. Stucco on one side. Rock on the top. Rock face on the other side. There's a better view. So basically, I already did the grading. Um, I kind of left out of the video, but what I did is take a piece of bender board and I just got it the tightest radius I could, made a circle. So I'm gonna show you how to place concrete by yourself. And right now, I just got the string lines to the right elevation, and I can space around the form, and then I'm just gonna screw in the form to the right elevation right now. So I got a piece of bender board and I just made a circle as you can see. Right now I'm putting it at the right height. The reason why I'm doing the small slab is because all around it is going to be artificial grass. And then in the middle of it I wanted to put concrete because we're going to put a fire pit right there. I want this a little bit high because the grass is going to go up here and there's going to be a fire pit right here. So all I'm doing right now is just screwing the form in where it needs to be at the right level. And I'm having a tough time right there because there's some concrete that was in the hole with the stake. That's what happens. But uh, It's a little high so I'm tapping it down a little bit. Just putting the form in place where it needs to be. I got the string lines as a gauge. I'll lift that up a little bit right there. I'm just using screws to screw it in. It's bender board so it's easier to use screws. Checking the level, making sure everything's right where it needs to be. Good enough. Good enough. Okay, now comes the fun part of the concrete. You gotta mix it. You be an idiot and get a mixer to mix this little amount. So, so what I'm doing right now is I'm just gonna mix up some concrete. And uh, what I was saying is you don't need no mixer for this. It's just a small little slab. You just gotta mix it up with a little bit of elbow grease. Try not to inhale all that uh, dust and you'll be all right. And then I get a bag of Portland to make the concrete stronger. And then I put a shovel full of Portland cement in every wheelbarrow of concrete. And what I'm doing right there, I'm just adding some cement to the mix just to make it stronger. And I'm going over to get some water and I'm just going to mix it up. So just add enough water to it. You don't want it too soupy. You know, I'm mixing a little bit dry because I want to get done like quicker. That's right. 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 That's right.
So basically, just don't put too much water. You're going to have just a bunch of slush, slop, and it's going to be hard to work with, and it's going to take a long time to dry, and it's going to have too much water in the mix. I want my mix right now just to be wet enough just to put it down. I'm gonna add a little bit of water to it. It's a little dry. Now I'm just placing the concrete into the form. You wanna just go ahead and just Fill up the form all the way. Teflon on the beat. Tra aim for a half inch higher than the form. You gotta screed it off and smooth it out, make it real flat. You don't want no divots in it, you know, you don't want no voids in it, you don't want bird bass when you're done, you want a nice flat surface. Looks like mud. So right now I'm just tapping it. Trying to get the face of the form smooth. Have a nice edge. If you don't do that, you're gonna get honeycombs all in it, you know, and then you have to sack it. But I don't want to have to come back and sack it. I just want it looking nice, looking good right off the bat. Putting more concrete in there. I just got to fill the whole thing up. And then we're going to go to screeding off the top of it. Which is done with a screed rod, which is like a, just get a, a two by four. The straightest one you can find. You don't want a warped board. A warped board's going to give you a warped finish. Teflon on the beat. So we're going to move on to screeding the concrete. Normally in the field, the concrete will be a, a little bit wetter and I'd be going a whole lot faster, but I'm just taking my time and I'm kind of sawing the top real smooth and flat. Teflon on the beat. And uh, if you get some holes, you know, just take your wood float and uh, fill up any voids you got. And then I'm just kind of sawing the concrete. But I'm just kind of doing it slow and showing, trying to show you how you, how you get it all flat. Add a little concrete, smooth it out with my float. I'm gonna be putting the artificial grass all around this. It'll be my first time doing that. That'll probably be the next video. But that's just a screed rod, screeding. That's a rod that I'm holding. And I'm just screeding the concrete flat. And I'm just moving the concrete around with my float a little bit. It's bunched up in the piles in certain spots. Then you just gotta, you know, just keep that screed rod going and just level off the whole thing. Concrete's all about knowing when to get on it and when to get off it. You know, a lot of people play in the concrete all day long and, and really unnecessary. 
you just you gotta know the concrete as they're working with it like when to get on it when to get off it when it's when you got anything hot when you got a hot load you gotta go quicker you gotta get a machine you just gotta know you gotta know what to do but you only know that by like doing a lot of a lot of jobs and stuff I'm screeding off all that concrete right now and um, bada boom bada bing that's it I got it all flat now I'm gonna go ahead and float it so I got my hand float right there and I basically I'm just smoothing it all out and I'm just using my eye to make sure everything's flat And then I'm gonna edge it next. So, looking at the video, I guess what I do is I just kinda, I go into like a counterclockwise motion in circles and just smooth everything out and flatten everything out. You're also opening the concrete when you use a float, you're opening it so it could get air to dry. Because when you trowel it, you seal it. So if you have a whole lot of concrete, you'd want to float it as quick as you could and seal it right away. So you got more time to work with it. In this case, I want to leave it open and float it. I want to get it done as soon as I can. That's an edger right there. So I'm going to take the edger and I'm just give the whole concrete a half inch radius edge. I'm using the side of the edger to kind of just score around the form, make it easier. Edging something like this is probably the hardest thing you could edge because it's a full circle. Edging when, when you got a straightaway and you got square uh, concrete is just, real simple, but this is a little more tricky because you got a big radius. So what you want to do is uh, when you're edging, just make sure that the edger's leaving a nice line. That means that you're keeping it flat because if you keep it crooked, then you're gonna bring the edge down, it's gonna look like crap. So, you'll see here when I'm edging it, where the e uh, the tool ends, it leaves a line, and if you're not leaving a line, you're doing something wrong. But, keep it nice and flat, and you gotta, it's kinda tricky to edge something like this, like a tight circle. But I'm scoring it right there, I'm just using the other side of the edger just to kinda score it kind of give it the line I want to give and then as you can see the edgers leaving a line that's what you want right there you don't you don't want to press too hard it's wet you want you don't want the edges to be dipping down you want everything real flat so I'm just running it down boom it's done now I'm gonna put the joint in it control joint that's where you want the concrete to crack most people probably wouldn't put any control joints in this uh, because it's shorter than 10 by 10 but I'd rather be safe than sorry so I put joints in all my concrete work I put too many joints because if it cracks I want it to crack in the joint I don't want it to crack and look and look like crap so that's why I put a lot of joints in my concrete as a three-quarter inch radius uh, joiner I'm gonna grab that screed rod I was using just to get a straight line so I put that down right there just to give it a real straight joint. And then I'm going to go ahead and do another joint the other way after I'm done with that one. But if you use a 2x4 or something like that on something small like this, I mean you're just going to get perfectly straight lines and that's what you want. Unless you're doing some decorative concrete with some crazy joints that I've seen people do that looks really nice. But uh, that's when you get a lot more experience. So now I'm just, I, I'm not even measuring, I'm just eyeballing the other side where the center is. I'm starting the joint right there. Where it looks pretty good to me. And then grabbing the 2x4 to keep it straight. And uh, just making sure that 
it lines up straight with the with what I got started there. And then uh, I'm just placing the other control joint the other way. You got to know when to put the joint. You don't want to do it when the concrete's just really, really wet. It depends on how much water you add to load, what the slump is and everything else. But like right now, this is perfect timing. What I'm doing it is the joints, you know, I'm not using a whole lot of effort and it's making a straight joint. If you wait too long, it's going to be hard to joint. Too early, you're going to put, you're going to put you know sinkholes where you where you're joining it so now i got my joint done so now i'm just gonna get the lines out i'm gonna trowel it a little bit and then actually when i started troweling it i realized it'd be better just to float it again just float all the lines out of it because it's really not ready to trowel and it's not flat enough to trowel. So I decided to grab my float and I'm just going to float it all out. And I'm going to keep it open because it's still pretty wet. So when I float it, it just opens up the concrete. It smooths it out, but it kind of roughs it up and it lets the air get in there. So just smooth it back out. Get all your lines out from the joints and from the edge. Okay, what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna trowel it. I got a midget trowel right there. I'm just gonna start uh, sealing the concrete up, smoothing it out. I mean, that's when it's getting really glossy and it's getting really smooth, but I'm using a little midget trowel right there because it's such a small slab, it's easier to get all around with. Instead of using a big trowel, you can maneuver it better. And when you're troweling, you just try not to catch your edges. You don't want to catch the edges because you're going to gash the concrete and you're going to have to refloat it and stuff. Just use your edges and um, if you get a bad part, like an ugly part of the concrete, just use your edge to pull up some cream and then you smear it over the other part of it or the part that's not. The part that's ugly, you're trying to fix. Just grab some cream from the edge of the trowel. But all I'm doing right now is just getting the lines out. I'm trying to get it as good as I can. And then once I do this, I'm gonna take the edger and I'm gonna go back over the whole edge the one final time I only do the edging about twice on jobs I don't see no reason to do any more than that just get them looking decent and then polish them up so I'm done well I'm actually clearing the center of the joint right there to get some of the mud out make it easier when I'm when I run the last pass over with the joiner like I said, just edge twice, run the joiner twice. So right now I'm just going over the edge again. Again, this edge is harder to do on a radius, so you gotta you gotta just do it a few times to get the hang of it, but that's not the easiest thing to do. Edging something round is, is kind of a challenge. I normally use an edger that's a lot wider, but since this is a tight radius, I'm just using like the thinnest edger I got. So just go back over your edge, make sure the edge looks all good.
and then once I'm done with the edger I'm gonna run the joiner the hand joiner through the joints again just to make sure that they're nice and smooth but finishing concrete it's not hard but it is the first time you got to do it a while to like get the hang of everything and you might not have a fantastic looking first time doing this but it's not that hard you should be able to have a decent look I know the first concrete I poured it looked great but it was not not great because I had little bird baths everywhere I wasn't paying attention to keeping stuff flat and it was at a school so when we wet it down with all the water I could see, like my boss was pointing out like hey nice bird bath and I was like huh so I look and yeah like I had water puddling on my sections and stuff so it just takes a good eye and some experience and know what you're doing try to keep stuff flat and um, try to finish it as good as you can it should look okay so I'm about done edging it right now and then I'm gonna put the joiner on again again that's a hand joiner and I'm just putting control joints in other words I'm controlling where the cracking is going to be. If the concrete decides to crack, it'll crack in the joint most likely. So I'm just running over the joints again real quick. And then I'm going to do the final trowel to it. And then I'm going to broom finish it. And that's a wrap. But I am going to do another video on laying down artificial grass because that's what I'm about to do all around this. So I've never did that. So I'm going to do a video on that too. But concrete something I've done a long time. And um, that wall in front of me where I'm working is like some of the nicest stonework I've done. So all I'm doing now is just m giving the joint a final finish, making sure it looks, looks good. And you see me rubbing my tools in the dirt. I'm just cleaning them off. Um, so I'm retroweling the concrete for the final trowel. I don't know why, but I decided to grab a bigger trowel. But I think I go back to the midget trowel because it seemed to be better. Yeah, there I go with the midget trowel. The midget trowel for something like this is better. It's so smaller. It's easier to get around everything. So, I know people that tell me they, they know how to finish concrete and stuff, but I've seen a lot of ugly work, and um, I definitely know how to finish concrete. So basically, I'm giving it the final trowel. I'm going to make everything as smooth as I could possibly can. And then I'm going to try to time the brooming right because I want the broom finish to be real light on this. Um, different jobs, you know, they want different finishes. Like if it's a sidewalk for a handicap ramp, you're probably going to want to do it really rough, you know, so nobody slips. But on this, I'm just, I'm going to give it a real light finish. Um, I have big plastic concrete brooms that are plastic bristles, but I want something lighter than that. So I found this little dust, like a little dusting broom in my garage that I'm going to use on this. Just because it's little, it'll be easy to maneuver and it's, the bristles are real fine. So it'll leave me a fine finish. But before you broom finish the concrete, you want to get a bucket of water and always use water and have it wet or else you're going to 
you're gonna be putting a heavy finish when you don't want one so you want it to slide over the concrete real easily so right now I'm I'm finishing troweling I'm about to get a bucket get some water and then I'm gonna broom the concrete for the final step in the concrete now if I didn't want to broom it it will be done right now it will be done right then but I do want to broom finish it so I'm gonna go get a bucket of water I dumped the water out because the bucket was dirty. Get clean water. If you get dirty water, you're going to have all kinds of dirt and crap in your concrete. So get you some clean water. And you just want it to look consistent, you know, you don't, you want it to look like it was broom straight. You don't want a bunch of swivels or anything in it. You just want it to look good. So they have so many stakes in the way and everything. A big broom wouldn't really be easy to maneuver. So I found this little broom, like I said, with fine bristles. There it is. I just dip it in the water and I'm going to broom the concrete. And that's the final step. And like I said, I just want to try to keep it consistent to where it looks like a big broom just ran over it. I don't want it. I don't want to go different ways. I want to stay the same way and just give it a straight, even broom. I think my joints look pretty straight for eyeballing them. That looks like his exact center. Now nah, I'm looking at this, but like I said, just broom it off. And then my next scene, I'm gonna come in two days later and I'm gonna strip the form. And I recommend giving it two days. Uh, I see finishers trying to strip it the same day and they end up cracking pieces off and it's not worth it. So let it dry for two days and come back and strip the forms. So there's two days later, as you can see the concrete's a lot lighter and I'm just stripping the form off. And just be careful because the concrete is still kind of new. Just go slow. Be careful. Don't try to pry too much on the on the edge where you might chip it or something. Just take your time. It'll come right off. Take all the screws out. All the screws out of the stakes. Tap the stakes loose. Pull them out. put them aside and um that's basically it you got a beautiful concrete slab and then check out my next video i'm gonna be laying artificial grass all around this i'll try to show a picture of this at the end or at least like one more video of this finished and stripped but it's not that hard. There you go. There's a concrete slab. I do most of my concrete jobs round because when you do uh, concrete with a lot of square areas, you get a lot of cracks. And when you when you do things round, it tends to crack a lot less. Corners don't crack when they're round as much as they would if they're square. So that's why I do all my concrete uh, mostly all round and radiuses. But I'm just using the stake right there just to pop the form off. I kick it with my foot, just whatever. Just be gentle with it, just get the form off. No big deal. And that's it. Placing a concrete slab, a small concrete slab. Concrete's placed, it's not liquid, so it's not poured. So I'm just trying to give you the lingo and the job and everything else. So thank you for your time. Check out my next videos. Check out my music. My name is Teflon James, T E P H. L-O-N space J-A-M-E-S And I hope the video helped you out So Subscribe, like, below, all that
All right, then. I'm up out of here till the next time.